Hello, drummers and other creatures. It's my great privilege today to be having a conversation with my teacher, Asaf Sirkis, who is an amazing, world-class jazz uh, drummer. He's an educator and um, somebody who's, who's sort of dabbled and played in so many different styles and with so many different types of artists. Um, I don't even know where to start. I've been studying uh, jazz with Asaf as well as technique. Uh, for a good few years, and uh, I've had a, an amazing experience learning drums from Asaf. Um, one of the things that Asaf brings to the table is also a knowledge of the Indian conical rhythm language. Is that what that's called? Hello, Asaf. That's right. Hi. <laughs> um, would you like to maybe just give a little introduction to what you're doing? I know you're a very busy musician at the moment. Yeah, so I, I play the drums uh, professionally. I work as a drummer mostly. That's mostly what I do. I also uh, compose music and uh, I've been studying the South Indian vocal percussion, like you said, and it's called conical. And that's the art of reciting rhythmic syllables according to the rules and regulations, if you can call it that, of the South Indian uh, 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 rhythmic tradition, which is quite um, old and very rich tradition and very, very different than other rhythmic traditions of around the globe. Um, I've also studied, uh, uh, as like you said, uh, we studied technique together. So I have studied with uh, the great uh, Bruce Becker, who was a, a long time uh, student of, uh, 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 sorry. <laughs> Freddie Gruber. <laughs> Freddie Gruber, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. just I'm kind of waking up a little bit. Okay, Freddie Gruber and um, um, uh, yeah, other than that, uh, I am uh, playing uh, mostly jazz related music. At the moment, I'm a member of uh, the uh, Soft Machine uh, uh, band. Uh, it's quite a... Is you that know, prog, a technically? Canterbury prog, Canterbury. It techni again, it's technically that band exists since 1967. Uh -huh. So it had many, many, many different people. It had people like Alan Holdsworth, who is a British guitarist, great British guitarist who sadly passed away a few years ago. Uh, it had uh, um, a Robert Wyatt on it. And of course, John Marshall, great and in my opinion, very uh, underrated, uh, uh, amazing English drummer. John recently uh, retired in the beginning of this year, uh, 2023, I have joined the band. Uh, I've okay. played with the band before that uh, a few times, just as a dip, but uh, now as uh, I'm a regular um, a musician in the band. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not so familiar, but it is a very improvisational sort of jazz rock. Yeah, Absolutely, probably. yes. Yeah. I mean, um, um, from, I would say, mid-70s, 73, 74, 75, especially when uh, Alan Holdsworth, uh, British guitarist, uh, joined, and later uh, John Etheridge uh, joined the band, uh, it became more of a fusion band, I would say, jazz rock. Uh, but it always had this kind of a very British, British, uh, 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 um, color to it, to the music. It wasn't like um, the other um, jazz rock stuff that you would hear around. It, it, it was kind of similar, but it always had a British thing in, in it. And I really like that band. I've always, you know, I've listened to that band since my early 20s, you know. Uh -huh. I mean, I, I'm a big fan of Alan Holdsworth, and uh, that's how I got to know him. Yeah, he was so one from, of those, like super creative artist wasn't he Absolutely, stretched all yeah. the boundaries yeah yeah so is, that, is it weird playing with with a band that sort of historically you knew as a fan and then uh yeah you, know, you get to participate in the music making yeah absolutely i mean it's um uh well i i again i've i've joined i haven't not joined the band but i've played with the band since say 2015 or 16 on and off you know when when John, John Marshall was not, um, he had kind of a period of on and off um, uh, being a, a, a little bit unwell and he wasn't, be, was able, wasn't able to travel all that much. So I, and along with other uh, guys, you know, uh, like uh, Nick Franz and Gary Husband, we would kind of dep him 
mm -hmm. in the band whenever he was not able to travel and um, and so on. So um, since that time, it was always great for me to you know to uh, play with these guys because of the history, because of my history, uh, bes but especially because uh, in that band uh, there were people that I admire and been listening to for many many years so it was really really uh, exciting exciting uh, event eventful thing for me to uh, whenever that was uh, possible and uh, i was uh, you know very very excited very very happy to be a, a regular member of the band right now so we are basically in the middle of a tour and uh, we are going to basically tour the us usa uh, uh, in October, before that in Europe, in September, November in the UK, and then later in, in, in Europe again, and next year as well. Uh, so it's really fantastic to join the band, given the history and everything. But also what I really like about this band is that they play a lot. And, you know, we've got like a, a quite a body, like massive set list of like, yeah. I don't know, something like 30 or 35 songs that we kind of, you know, switch around and, you know, switch the set, but there's a core set and we play that set most of the gigs. And it's just so nice to be able to play with the same people, the mm -hmm. same or similar set and just make a sound of a band together because, you know, I mean, John is, uh, was an amazing drummer. I mean, he doesn't play anymore. He was an amazing drummer and he made the sound of the band. He made Soft Machine what Soft Machine was. Now oh. I came in and I'm trying to find my place and it really helps when the band is busy and playing a lot, you know, and touring. Yeah, the question that was sort of coming into my mind uh, before that is, is you preempted really, which is, um, how do you adapt yourself to a situation where you have a, a well-known, you know, legendary band with a, a, a really unique sound and uh, a legendary drummer as well? Um, and you've got to fit in, I guess, you're doing your own Asaf thing and you're also uh, connecting with whatever the legacy of, of that previous drummer. How does that, how does that work really? Did you sit and, and study all their recordings and try and imitate uh, John Marshall's sound? Uh, or did you just sort of go, oh, stuff it, I'm just going to do my own thing here? But, but, you know, is that something that you also, you know, communicate with your fellow band members about? How does that all work? Well, it's, it's, a, it's both are true. It's a bit of both of what you just said. So there's an element of, you know, kind of reverence that I have for, for John and for the music and for that kind uh, of drum playing, you can say. Uh, on the one hand, so I made sure that whatever I'm playing on, which, whichever songs I know really well, you know, and I, I usually, you know, study songs by, uh, by heart. So I, I learned the melodies, I learned the, um, the riffs, the, uh, the, the, the parts, the structure. Sometimes even the set list, I learn everything by heart, so I don't need anything external to help me with uh, playing the music. I can just close my eyes and, and, and get in there, into the, the musical landscape, you can you say. You more or less need to automate the, the knowledge of the composition. So Absolutely. In other words, you could play it without any other musicians present. You could just play yeah. through that composition yeah. by evoking it in your mind. Yeah, yeah. And you know, yeah. that takes care of everything, I find. For me, that really takes care of everything. So. I mean, you said, are you trying to um, reference or imitate some of John Marshall's or, or Robert Wyatt things? I probably do, but I'm not doing it consciously. The thing is, I've, I've internalized that music with those drummers playing that music. So I, I've got a sound in my, my head and those drummers, Robert and, and John, are part of that music. So I've internalized it uh, enough, so I don't need to think about that. Yeah. Now, the other thing is that when you internalize music, you don't need to worry, so you can just be yourself and play. So it kind of serves both, both uh, you know, purposes, you know, from one hand, learning the music 
with those drummers in them, in that music, kind of takes care of being, uh, uh, you know, being loyal, you can say, to the sound of the music, to the style mm -hmm. of playing that you're playing. From the other hand, I feel that it also gives me freedom to go on, on, you know, and do my own thing. And I find this, what I find is the more we uh, play together as a band, the more I, can, I, I veer off towards doing my own thing than, you know, what the other guys were doing. Okay, I still reference uh, John Marshall sometimes. Some of the grooves and some of the uh, different attitudes, attitudes that he he would he would uh, express in the music. Like what I particularly like about John is the fact that he he never made a fuss of anything. He would just cruise through parts and and mm. sections, uh, doing pretty much a similar kind of a similar thing, definitely dynamically. And uh, he was just not making too much fuss, uh, which some, <laughs> something I am a bit of guilty of, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, part B, you know, simple, you know, part <laughs> C, let's toms, you know. So, I, so that, that I like, I learned a lot basically from, from you know, uh, learning that music. And sometimes I, I do like to reference some of the stuff that he's doing. Yeah, but, so, but again, so his, his approach was a little bit more economical. In yes, way. in in many ways, yes. In many ways, I mean, technically, you know, when he would uh, solo, he would just go for it, and he would just play, play like a monster. But um, uh, with within the music, yeah, he was there was a certain kind of this is the the role of the drums, and that's what it it gives you without too much drama. <laughs> yeah, the drummer and the drummer. Yeah. Uh, so that's something I'm I'm looking into right now and and trying to find my own place within that. Yeah, it's it's a kind of curiosity where there's the very different modality between a sort of jazzy improvisational approach to things where the drummer becomes a more equal member who's sort of stands in the front a little bit more often. Uh, whereas in I don't know if I'm describing that very well, but in you know in a rock setting you know, our job of rock, blues, funk and all of that. The job is to kind of not be too noticed. And, you know, on the odd exception, when you're playing a solo, maybe you get to show off a little bit more. But in, in a lot of circumstances, anyway, I suppose I'm generalizing there. So, um, and here, I suppose you're bridging the gap between those two things. So there's a lot of improvisation in software. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. yeah, there is. And, and that's the other thing I really like about that music. It's very free. Mm -hmm. It's very, very, there's, there's a certain amount of complexity uh, that you know you really need to study some of the things you know when you want to play in 15 or in 11 or in 9 or whatever you really need to kind of you know practice some of these things on their own you know kind of you want to maybe uh, uh, sometimes I would uh, take a section and make a little play along for myself and 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 loop that the, only that section mm -hmm. because some of these things are a little bit uh, uh, you know uh, tricky but once you uh, understood the trickier bits, uh, most of it is very, uh, very drum friendly in the sense that you basically can do anything. You can do anything, and it's a, it's a, it's a really, a, it's a dream band for a drummer basically because the drummer gets to really, really play. Yeah, that's cool. And you, do you have any kind of? Um, I'm, I'm sort of thinking about the approaches to internalizing. Uh, the music are there any sort of clever tricks that you employ or is it just you know someone sometimes you think oh there must be some sort of um, uh, technique for this or is it really just spending as much time as you can listening maybe playing along to get the thing to soak in or do you have any sort of cunning uh, strategies well, um, it's mostly that. It's mostly just the mileage and uh, just uh, keeping that music in, in my head and, uh, you know, learning it more and more and internalizing it more and more. And the more I internalize it, the freer I am to do my own thing. The, the, the only trick, it's not really a trick. Um, you know, these days we, we like hacks and all this kind of thing. But basically the only thing that I use as a technique, you could say, 
it's more of an approach really rather than a technique is singing so mm -hmm. for instance um if if i um if i learn a new piece i learn by singing it and you know by heart basically singing it by heart and i always find that with singing uh, there is a, a very uh, uh interesting body mind connection um that happens when you practice that and you know the good thing is if you're singing a tune if you're singing a rhythm if you are verbalizing something or singing something you don't need to book a drum room for that you can do it anywhere no. and i no. do i do practice quite a lot when i'm on the road driving uh you know uh, taking a flight or, or on a bus trip that or, was what or... initiated your interest in conical am i right yeah, I mean, uh, you mentioned uh, uh, Bob Moses earlier on. Mm -hmm. He's the guy that opened my mind to that. So, uh, Bob, I studied with Bob um, in Israel, back in Israel, when I was in my early 20s. Mm -hmm. Only just uh, a couple of lessons in the beginning, and then he came back. He, 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 at that time, he was kind of fourth and back, coming fourth and back to tour with the uh, Israeli saxophone player. I, I forget his name, sorry, but um, uh, he would go, come and every time he would come, I would take a lesson with him and uh, uh, he showed me that whole approach of vocalizing the instrument, okay, which was very new to me. I was just listening to music and, and that's it. And that's, and, you know, learning by reading from books and everything. And he introduced me to this uh, uh, vocalizing thing. And that really turned my drumming around, okay? You introduced that to me in, in our first lesson, I remember. And you explained the resolutions it. stuff, which is another topic, but also the idea of singing. You said to me, look, just go around and sing jazz rhythms to yourself. And uh, I started doing that. And I was listening to the earphones a lot when I was going about. And I stopped doing that. It really blew my mind, actually. And I, I'm sort of yeah. a verbalizer anyway. I'm always trying to get people to verbalize and I sing along uh, all the songs I know are from internalizing by singing the same way and it but somehow just you just said learn to to improvise by going absolutely yeah it blew my mind it really did yeah yeah and it blew my mind as well when when Bob uh, introduced me to this um uh, and it really as I said it really changed my whole approach to music and drumming so since I uh, I learned that from Bob, I've tried to expand on that concept as a concept. I mean, you spoke about the resolution point thing, which is something that we can speak about, but that's his use of that approach. But mm -hmm. there's so many other uses of the, this approach. You know, you can, uh, you, I mean, and again, you you speaking earlier about conical, uh, you know, South Indian vocal percussion. And that's, for me, it was the next step, how to, you know, uh, expand on that concept. So um, I learned so much from that, and I think it shaped my musical style of playing, if you can call it that, mm -hmm. on, uh, on the drums. Because, again, there's something very magical about uh, singing it's more than just you making a sound something happened to your mind and body yes. when you're doing that and that something i still don't know what it is but it works you know it works and it makes i think it you know some people tell me how how do you play musical on the drums is it a tech is there a technique how are you using or are you are you trying to avoid certain things so i would avoid how to avoid leaks a lot of people ask me about that you know people mm -hmm. go and, and and transcribe drummers and then they can't find themselves anymore mm -hmm. uh, people that overdo that at a certain point I, I think it's important to overdo that at some point in your musical development but um how to find yourself and uh, the the thing that i found found with singing vocalizing the instrument is that you, I like to see it as a two-way learning system, okay? So usually, mostly when we learn, and especially in a, a, a Western context, we learn from outside in. So we have a book 
a concept, uh, a recording, we transcribe, we read, we play, we practice the exercise, and then we hope that if we practice it enough, it will kind of release itself in whatever you're doing unconsciously, or maybe even consciously, you say, okay, man, I'm just gonna do that thing that I've learned from that book yesterday. Mm -hmm. And you try it out in different way and that's one way and it's a great way and everybody should do that in my opinion but the other way is the way of vocalizing and it's really studying from the inside out so that you are giving a voice to the rhythms that you have inside that you're reaching inside to yeah. pull out so to speak those rhythm with the voice you're giving a name and address to your own rhythm basically okay yeah, really, sure. um uh, i noticed that when we did um the syncopation sort of comping exercises and you very kindly got me to do it with a reverse lead so i'm a right-handed drummer and, and you yeah. got me to do that with a left hand lead and i was singing everything there and until i started working with you i i thought i was verbalizing i asked people to count stuff and so on and so forth which can be difficult sometimes but i'm a fan of all that but i hadn't quite got into it to the extent that you made me do it and there there is a weird connection when you're doing that which again i'm sure a lot of people watching this are familiar with the way uh syncopation or similar exercises are used to develop our vocabulary and i was doing all the swing stuff and but singing the whole thing. And we had, I think there were like four different singing things that we went Method, through. Method, yes. Yeah. So it was singing the uh, snare and bass comping patterns. It was singing the swing. It was singing the, the left foot two and four thingy. And um, yeah, it bridges something and makes a connection where it sort of blurs the, the inside and the outside in a way. And then I found myself almost not conscious of the reading process anymore. And it all, it all felt like it was just a loop which was yeah. very hippie-ish actually on that. But it was quite yeah, exactly. It, it, it makes uh, the other thing, when you use uh, vocalization in that context, in the context of uh, four-way coordination, uh, I like to call it five-way coordination because you're, <laughs> you're singing, that's another element. So um, what happens is that, like you said, it's focusing you, it, it creates a level of um, engage your engagement with what you're doing that would may be or may not be there when you're practicing without it mm -hmm. so uh, usually it may probably not it's probably not there it's just fo focusing your attention i would say that it's double the the, the focus yeah. okay you can't and now, compare the the attention and the the awareness exactly, that comes yeah. from doing that so you know so uh, while when you when you're practicing without this uh, approach after a while you know everybody is the same you know after 45 minutes of doing something you start to think about who you need to call or about dinner or about your facebook friend or whatever and doesn't, when doesn't you have to wait 45 <laughs> minutes necessarily <laughs> all right uh, maybe maybe after seven uh, i mean but i am the same you know i'm the same uh it happens to everyone because our mind is very busy and that's what it does. It thinks yeah. about all sorts of things. That's and when you does. don't give it any task, it just goes <laughs> on anyway, you know? So, uh, so, uh, uh, it gives it something to do. And I think, um, it, it focuses the attention to, uh, like you said, to a far a higher level, you can say, and uh, what happens is that every second, every minute that you practice in this mind state, you are getting so much more for your time. You know, yeah. you're getting so much more rhythm. You're getting mo so much more coordination, technique, uh, uh, groove, uh, you know, uh, fo uh, sheer focus on anything else that you would like to do. So, you that, know, and there's no circumstance where that's not useful, I think, as well. Yeah, listen to I mean, soft people if you won't listen to me about this, verbalize everything. I mean, it doesn't matter what style of drumming, as well. And, and when you're singing drumming stuff, you're practicing drumming, absolutely, exactly. You can do it off the kit, you can do it with the kit. I, I, I like to recommend uh, doing uh, when you play, when you play and sing together. I would recommend doing that in the context of four-way coordination exercises. Yeah. 
I wouldn't recommend it uh, in the um, in the um, context of, uh, let's say, if you're playing in a rehearsal on a gig and you're trying to verbalize what you're doing, I wouldn't recommend that because, in my opinion, it just takes a little bit of your uh, uh, sound, the the sound that you can I hear. I used to sing in along to everything when I was playing covers bands and stuff. And I, right, I, yeah. I, I did, didn't realize that I was like literally singing along, and when I became aware of it, I I sort of tamed it down a little bit. But... Right, yeah. I, I tried it a lot, and you know, also with the vocal percussion, the Indian, South Indian vocal percussion, the conical, there, there is a certain, uh, let's say, let's call it a performance element where you sing and play, or just sing and just play and then do it together and so on. So uh, uh, that, uh, with trying this, this element of doing it together in different contexts, I found that what really happens there it's very nice to hear and uh, from the point of view of the listener it's kind of very exciting and everything but in from the point of view of your own performance what i found and this is just personally for myself is that when i sing i hear what i'm doing less because yeah. you know i'm just basically taking a little bit of that sound with the sound of my voice okay so, so mostly the, the singing element is an exercise or a for me yes um, for me, it's it, it, exactly. when, yeah, when you bring that into performance, that's not, not really intended yeah, to be the case. Exactly. And, uh, but again, this is just my own uh, approach. And uh, uh, the, the, the element of singing can be used in so many far more ways that I've used it, you know. Yeah. But, uh, but I mean, like for my own. As well, like, like, I don't know, being able to sing backing or even lead vocals or something like that. So practicing, verbalizing or exercises can help you with that if you're interested in uh, learning how to actually sing uh, song or whatever while you're playing drums which is a lot of fun it could yeah it could uh, actually help with that as well if you are able to sing something different than what you're playing while you're playing in say a, in a five-way coordination thing like i would like to call it then definitely you you probably will have better um you know facility better better you'll be better skilled to do that better equipped to do that so uh you know but the voice can be used in so many different ways you know we spoke about the just uh off the instruments just just uh, improvising or playing in a, the context of uh, uh for weak coordination but there's also other things like when i used to uh, study with bruce becker he would tell me verbalize the uh, uh, your movement so if, if it's an up stroke say up and then you say release or say pick up or say uh, accent or say down or say uh, uh, bounce catch or whatever so describe he would... the mechanics of what you're doing exactly the, the exactly yeah. and that is a very different but still very effective i find another use of the uh, of our vocal cords and yeah, it, it, the thought process is very abstract and as soon as you verbalize as soon as you create a, a sound that's you've basically taken that interior thing you've made it into something that's in the world and uh, i mean something i tell my my students my 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 latest thing is you know when when i'm asking people to count something at whatever level of activity uh and they they say oh i said are you counting that oh i'm counting in my head and i say well when you fancy some lunch and you're hungry do you think about eating a sandwich or do you eat a sandwich and you know there's a, there is a difference between those two things and and the 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 use of the voice seems to me of, of like making something happen in the the real world uh, and taking it outside because otherwise the things that are going on in our head it's hard to distinguish to some extent that abstraction of just like thoughts brrr, going through the head and then when you're thinking about your music on its own it's in that sort of abstract mushy place and when you put it into your voice it forces you to to yeah sort of be a bit more specific and, yeah. and acknowledge the real world exactly yeah it disciplines your 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 mind and it gives it something to do and it creates that body mind connection you know and really it's it's really mostly about creating a certain level of engagement of what you're doing a certain level of awareness 
through these different things that you can do that really um, takes your playing, in my opinion, to the next level. Yeah. yeah. Where it's not necessarily about technique. It's not necessarily anymore about the, 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 the mechanics. The, it's more than that. Okay. And, and you know, the, the thing about um, being engaged in what you're doing and, you know, voice using the vocal cords is just one way of doing that. When you are doing that, when you are engaged in what you're doing, every, uh, you learn and experience so much. Uh, and I, in my opinion, that's, that's the, the thing that made my, um, my practice much, much more effective, R like really a lot, far, far more effective than other things. And, and what I found is that, you know, in drumming, in the drumming community, or the drummer's world, we like to speak about compartments. We like to mm -hmm. compartmentalize oh, yeah. the subjects in which you are practicing. So you can say, I'm practicing rudiments or technique. I'm practicing coordination or learning how to play jazz. I'm studying uh, a repertoire. Okay. I'm studying a new groove. I am studying, I don't know what, uh, a solo, comping. There's all these sections and it's, it's almost like we need to always practice all of them uh, 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 without which your drumming will not get any better, mm -hmm. so to speak. But in a sense, what I found is when you are, instead of working in so many direction, work in one direction and that direction is focus and engagement, all these other things become better. You know, the focus so, as a thing in itself. Yes, know. exactly. Yeah. And, and, and it's like a blanket exercise. It's just the one exercise. Yeah. Yes, the context of the uh, exercise would change. Yeah. One day you will practice uh, coordination. One day you will practice uh, technique. One day you will practice soloing. One day you will practice comping. But if you do that with that, putting that awareness blanket over it so to speak if you could say that uh, uh, then the, you you would you'd be practicing forward coordination but your technique will get better as well your timekeeping yeah. will get get uh, get better as well and even your soloing would get better something that completely the opposite of what you're playing of what you're practicing that yeah. that was what i found from my own experience with working with awareness um, I remember that you sort of articulated the hierarchy of awareness when you're um, working through things. Do you remember that? Um, yeah, of course. I still work with that. Uh, you know what? I wouldn't call it hierarchy. I would call it stacking of awareness. Okay. okay? So, uh, you know, let's say you, you practice a, a certain exercise. And uh, uh, when, I in, when I teach people who ask me about that, uh, I would get them to play something that they know. So it's not something that technically is challenging for me, for them. But so that th so they have some CPU uh, <laughs> space to think about mm. other things, some place in the brain. So you play, let's say you play just a little groove or whatever. So the first thing you might want to uh, turn your attention is, is say, let's say you're playing it with a click. Okay. So the first thing, you just make sure that you play this exercise. Let's say it's a two bar or four bar exercise. Let's say 20 times, but without fail or without mistakes, call, call the mistakes if you want, you know, so you can play it um, a solid leaf 20 times. Okay. So that's the first thing. So your mind goes, okay, if I don't play it <laughs> uh, uh, for, for, tw for 20 times, I'm going to have to go back again to mm -hmm. the beginning. And then again, to the, it, can, it can become a, a bit frustrating in the beginning, but then your mind says, okay, he's not leaving. He's, he's really <laughs> persistent. Let's find more. Let's do, let's focus more because all you basically need 
to play this exercise for 20 times is just a little bit more focused. It's, you know it, you know, it's just a little bit more focused. So you're already kind of starting to uh, warm up your mind to that uh, element of focus. Okay, so, okay, you've done that. That's first thing. Second thing, try to play it 20 times, but this time, stack another level of awareness to it. Let's say you got that 20 times thing down, you're good with that. Your mind kind of got used to this, it's got some, uh, you know, attention muscles there, mm -hmm. and you are going to the next step. Now let's try to every time the click comes on each beat, let's say if the click is on the beat, um, the instrument that you play with a click, try to match it with a click as much as possible. So you're starting to hear the click and to compare where you are. And you know, the click and us, it's a kind of a, that it's click like keeps a, speeding up and slowing down. Doesn't it? Exactly. And everybody does that. Okay. To some degree, some people more, some people less. It's, I, I like to say it's like driving a car. You never drive like this, you know, you drive a bit like that, a bit like that, you know, you're kind of veering off a little bit and then coming back. Just try to do that uh, uh, for a certain amount of time. So that stacking another level of awareness. Now you, you know how to play this thing well. Now you're focusing on your uh, uh, metronome, okay? And then the other thing that I like to do is focus on everything uh, between the clicks so, this, so that there is a, a solid consistency to the subdivisions that you're playing mm -hmm. or, or subdivision or subdivision. The, depending on what you're doing. Usually it's one subdivision. If it's a groove, you have a 16th note, an eighth note or whatever, just focus on the consistency of the, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, subdivision. Whatever's happening in between the clicks, basically. Exactly, yeah. So that's solid, that's in place, okay? And then uh, it could go any other way. I like to, uh, uh, at, at certain, uh, at that particular time, also think about my body, my posture and my body. So I'm, uh, I'm thinking about, I like to call this a point of contact. So I like to feel the, uh, the, the feet which are in the shoes and resting on the pedals of the uh, kit. My butt is resting on the uh, seat, of course, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, feeling the wrist and the, everything moving. And of course, feeling, you know, you are in good posture, you are relaxed and everything. Okay, so that's another level of awareness that we are stacked mm -hmm. in, into, into that. Okay, yeah. and, 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 and it- Develop layers of that as well. Exa beyond, exactly, so I like to call it awareness more. stacking. You, you're giving your brain just a chance to digest each one of these things and then stack them up to where if you work on that enough, you know, you are really, really training. It's like almost like going to the gym for the brain, you yeah. know, you're trying and to do something. You feel you stable on one, one of those layers. Yeah. That's the point at which you, you try yeah. and go to the next one. I suppose you could focus on individual dynamics between. Yes. Uh, yes, absolutely. And snare and bass and yeah. consider the, the balance of sounds and so on as well. Exactly. Another, another thing would be something like you would do uh, uh, in, as you, we would do in our uh, four-week coordination is like, say, just singing the snare part, mm -hmm. singing it. And by singing it, you're giving a different meaning to the rhythm. The rhythm becomes a bit different. Now you're singing the bass drum, the, diff the rhythm has a kind of different inclination. Singing the hi-hat, you know, uh, it's kind of a, a thing. You can even sing the subdivision. I like to use takadimi for uh, uh, 16th note. Takadimi, takadimi, takadimi. Or takita, takita, takita for triplet or ta ka ta ka ta ka ta if it's a rounded eight you know mm -hmm. uh, swung eights or ta ka ta ka for you know uh for eighth notes there's so many things you know you can also sing the offbeat you can with singing it's just endless so you yeah. you can stack all these things up to where uh, uh you are so much in what you're doing then, you know, it's like, uh, if you are, and, you know, I always like to encourage people who study with me and ask about this, 
to do this when they are well rested and well, you know, they, you have eaten, because it really uh, requires a lot of energy. An energy that in normal day-to-day -day life, we really don't expend so much. Okay, we just, yeah. you know, go on our day and do it in the easiest possible way. Uh, uh, but this really requires a lot of energy. So if yeah, you are- if you're on the mechanical side of things, can you can get sort of a bit stuffy or um, it gets a bit repetitive and you're not really you can go into sort of autopilot mode even if you're working on very challenging coordination and by bringing this dimension into it you can it gives you a whole another layer of things you can practice and you can as you were saying you, you you'd work on this initially with something that you already have internalized the the mechanics of it so you'd be playing something that was easy i guess from the point of view of what your hands and feet are doing and so that you've left space for your mind to sort of work through all these layers of stuff and that Absolutely. can really um give give a whole new dimension to things to work on and it's refreshing you know a lot of time we get stuck in more you know going for another book full of stuff and you think what's this all for mm -hmm. well, i do sometimes anyway and, and then, we all do this yeah. yeah we all do this developing awareness is you can, can just enrich so much of the familiar stuff and give you a whole new understanding of it yeah basically the the the, the whole idea here, here and you mentioned the, the the books and the and the outside stuff which is again really important and everybody should do should have books and have uh, you know some things that they've done some say i've done this i've done that it's it's great we all need to do that but eventually at some point you say okay would it be more uh, eff eff efficacious now to study a different book about some different subject or stuff, or just to take any exercise? I can compose the exercise mm -hmm. where the, the, the book is right here. You are writing the book where you are working internally rather than externally. It's exactly the same uh, thing like we spoke earlier with the voice. You know, you're working with from inside out yeah is that is there a, do you think there's any point at which someone has to like work towards being able to do that or do you think if you understand the, the concepts of it at any stage of your musical um sort of development you could embrace this in other words like because i try some of this stuff with beginners and it, you know you can improvise or if somebody's open to conceptualizing an idea you can take them not to put the books on the side but certainly in parallel of going well if you understand how this exercise works you can do your own stuff with it or make up your own exercises do, do you think it's it's a good idea to bring that in at a, a more developed stage or, or would you agree that you can do do that anytime you like really i would so say like that sounds a bit loaded <laughs> no 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 i i i, I it's, a, it's a great question and I, the answer is very simple the earlier the better okay we are yeah we're now ready. and let me try to explain this so basically if you look at um, where music is very, in cultures that mu around the world where music is very prevalent. You know, uh, one of the things uh, that, um, uh, and especially non-Western cultures of music, one of the things that they do with their children and families is they sing and they dance from a very early age. Mm -hmm. So like if you go to a, a, a South American or African or Spanish family, there is music from, you know, even people that are not professional musicians, singers mm -hmm. or players can play something, you know? Yeah. You nice. know, I grew up in Israel and I used to go to uh, Jerusalem, to the market in Jerusalem, and hear uh, Arabic people sing the, with the most beautiful voices ever. And they were just shopkeepers. They were not, they were not uh, 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 professional musicians. They could be if they wanted to, but they just know this music because they learned yeah. it so much earlier on. And when you, you know, when you are young, that's how you learn. You learn by vocalizing, by, by body movement, dancing and singing with your family where where in those families the, the the musical element was very important part of you know family gathering you know of the culture 
I mean, so, it's a similar process to acquiring your mother tongue, really. You don't sit down with a book and have exactly. someone, like, show you. Yeah. You know, everybody who starts learning reading and writing and so on already knows the language pretty fluently by that point. Yes, exactly. And, you know, earlier on, we were speaking about the levels of, you know, stacking of awareness and all that kind of thing. That's a maybe more uh, advanced level of that same stuff. Mm -hmm. But that stuff starts there start with a family gathering where the the mother and the uncle uncle and the, and the, and the father are singing and uh, and 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 uh, you know the mother is playing a, a little frame drum or whatever and everybody can play something you know so it starts from there so i would argue start with these things as early as possible and i wish i would have someone tell me that when mm. i was like Six yeah. or four years old, you know. I mean, yeah. People, people feel. I think, and this is. I'm not going to get into my whole shtick about the education system, but I, although I could be tempted, but yeah, I think this is one of those things where we we are sort of trained and a bit regimented, and so allowing people to feel free enough to experiment and and you know engage with these sort of activities of just singing and feeling musical and coming up with your own exercises and exploring in that way with a lot of modern people have a reticence um, to do that and so yeah i agree that you know doing that as early as possible and i yeah i wonder if that's um coming back to the idea of where you talked about learning all the um the soft machine or learning any repertoire from uh, the ears and by internalizing through listening and so on and so forth. Uh, and that feels like very much something in, in Western popular music is really the, the primary modality of, of learning. Um, but then we've also kind of become quite acclimatized to being schooled in some formal way. So this sort of need for books and so, so on and so forth has become a sort of quite dominant. And rather than putting that in a context of one set of tools which I, you know, I, yeah, you, as you're saying, uh, you do need to do all of that stuff, but it's it's part of a bigger picture, and sometimes that gets forgotten. And so, being yeah, being able to just like, yeah, again, coming back to that, sing the stuff to yourself, and 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 think about it as it's just a natural process of, uh, you know, whether you're as a kid learn some nursery rhymes or singing Happy Birthday or whatever. Uh, learning a musical instrument is an extension of that. It's not that much of a big deal, even though you can sort of take it into these uh, multi-dimensional uh, realms. Um, that's it. You know, we are kind of machines for learning in some way, or beings for learning. Maybe not to say we're machines in the age of AI, because yeah. I might be a machine. No way to learn anymore. Um, but yeah, so. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's very, very, I mean, all of that, again, it's very, very interesting to me. So yeah, being able to liberate, I mean, how would you, do, do, do you teach um, students of all levels? Because I, I know that you have, um, you know, you work within institutional environments in the UK. I'm certainly, what's it, uh, Trinity and Leeds? Trinity Laban, yes, yeah. Yeah, and so you're teaching jazz there. Do you, do you work with students at sort of earlier stages of their musical development as well? Not at the moment, no. I have done in the past, but uh, at the moment, uh, all my teaching is uh, focused around uh, higher education. Yeah, and so, but, but if you let's say if you were working with people who are less experienced, would you be looking to in, introduce these elements at an early stage? Then I guess so. Yes, yes, and and uh, uh, the way in which I would introduce this to the person who is coming to me uh, to learn would be different according to their age so yeah uh, but it's it is the same it is the same principle the principle of inside out but also outside in uh, learning so um uh, if if it's a, a a young person then i would maybe make it more like a fun game type of thing and not think about the the, the concept too much and the because you know the younger you are and you know this from your experience mu much better than me uh, uh the younger you are the, the 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 way young people learn is just it's very quick and they're like sponges and they don't mm -hmm. need to think about anything too much they yeah. just learn they repeat and and then it's it's fine they they, they can do that 
Do you think yeah. adults can access that as well? You know, because I, I don't know if it's like just a cultural habit that we don't do that when we're older. Uh, it's harder. It's harder for adults to access that. Uh, I would say the older you get, the 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 less access you get to that way of learning. Simply because that's a, just a physiological, in my opinion, just a physiological uh, process of you know getting you older and getting set in your ways and so on. Yeah, but your brain is evolving very plastically when you're younger. I think exactly, and then, exactly, and it's yeah. it's it's designed to do that. Uh, and the thing is the. the, the but it doesn't mean that what I'm saying is I'm trying to say that it doesn't mean that an older person cannot learn as quick or as uh, as effectively as a young person. It's only the method is going to be different. And one of the main mm. differences is that younger people don't need to do and don't need to understand anything. They just need to play and have fun yeah. with learning. The older you, you get, the more you need to know about everything. Why am I doing that? Can you explain, you know, all that step by step kind of process? Yeah. The books, the, uh, the, the, the uh, concepts, the stacking, all these kind of things are more, uh, uh, are more needed here so that the person knows exactly what he's going for. Okay. Yeah, I, I I like all of that stuff, but I, I do wonder if I could learn how to just let go of that a little bit more and embrace a more uh, youthful learning process more often. Um, I'd like to just tilt the subject a little bit because um, the time for space thing I wanted to bring up, it's contextual to this, but um, Asaf has a series of, is it fair to call them sort of play along drum compositions? Absolutely, yeah. Um, it's, it's basically uh, compositions that I composed and still composing. Um, uh, something that I enjoy very much doing, uh, almost daily on a daily basis. And very um, different from other drum play alongs because, uh, well, the name of the thing is obviously "Time for Space," and there's a lot of space, so it's it's forcing. And again, I'm coming from this rock pop background of keeping grooves and so on. And uh, it makes you have to fill in and texturize and yeah, work out what to do with space. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, uh, I mean, it's interesting how this came along. So basically, uh, before I thought about making play alongs uh, and, and you know have them on band camp and all and do a video series and all that whenever i would play an album or record rather, rather record an album with my own band i used to always uh, make a, a play along for myself to practice before the recording okay and these were really really like super basic uh, super clumsy kind of just give me the right notes, any sound would do kind of uh, play alongs. They were really hor horrible, uh, but they did the job because then I would get to play with my, you know, my music without having to hire a studio. And for a week of rehearsals, I could do a week of rehearsal at home and uh, I would come to the recording prepared. So, and I've always liked that, uh, uh, doing that kind of thing. And I, enjoy, I know, enjoyed very much doing uh, th that kind of practice as well. But uh, 2020, as the uh, pandemic uh, unfortunately hit, uh, uh, I was left at home uh, after, I think, about solid six years of touring where I didn't compose mm -hmm. anything and did very little with my band, uh, you know. Uh, or maybe just a few things, a few tours here and there, but not in the sense of uh, writing new material and recording it. So um, I said, okay, I, I have some time. Let me just, you know, I have a little keyboard here. Mm -hmm. uh, let me, uh, uh, let me, tr you know, come back to composing. And I did that. And of course, uh, during the pandemic, it was very difficult to meet with people. So I made myself some of, I started to play with some of those old, very old, clumsy uh, play-alongs. And then uh, I said, okay, what, what the hell? I, I, can, I can just, I have loads of music that I never ever released, you know, like hundreds of tunes, really, like a lot, draw, files full of tunes. And I said, okay, let me try and make a play-along 
so I can play and just enjoy and just keep my chops together while, while I'm not touring and stuff like that. So I started to do, uh, doing that and that kind of uh, started the whole thing of composing more and making more. And then I said, okay, maybe I make a little video and kind of uh, match the picture and the sound somehow. And I didn't know anything how to do this. And, um, you know, it became what it is now, you know, almost, uh, I think there's a hun hundred videos. Not all of them are published. Yeah, there's but... loads of it. And there's, there's, the, the whole thing is a series of audio recordings available on Bandcamp. Yeah. And, and there's tons and tons of videos on your YouTube channel of you playing these things. Um, the format on Bandcamp, I mean, I'd like to try and sort of describe uh, when you when you have like, uh, well, I don't want to name any names, but there's loads of series of like uh, music minus drums in the olden days. It was called that minus one. Minus you know? one, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. We went to the same school as well. That's we? right, they yes. Had all those yeah. albums there, and I learned how to play <laughs> Mr. Bojangles. Yeah, but, yeah, um, yeah. The um, yeah, you had that sort of thing where there's a, a very often it has a click or there's some sort of like straightforward pulse, whether it's a swing track or a rock type of thing. Um, but there's something going on throughout the track and you do your drumming and everything sort of makes sense. Um, when maybe if um, uh, later I'll, I'll sort of edit in some examples, if that's okay with you, of the, sure. the, the music, maybe just, uh, and I'll obviously link to your, your channel so people can watch, but your compositions here and the play along tracks are literally sometimes some phrases with very big, gaps in between so there isn't uh some of them have a sort of continuous pulse but a lot of them don't they're sort of like punctuations in the air and you have to sort of work it out and and, and you provide a backing track which is just the musical accompaniment and then there's a version which is uh with a click as well that you can follow and some of the stuff is like mixed meter there's all sorts of interesting time signatures some of it's four four and you can just plunk along to it as well and um there's also a click track on its own and if i if i got the idea right the idea was that you can stick the the tracks in the door and then you can play along using the click track but if you want to make your own video of it you exactly. can then uh take out the click track because you you can use it as a sort of like stems recording basically exactly and, that's the idea um, but yeah so the challenging thing again for someone like me is like what the hell to do in those those gaps and i found that i have to listen a lot um, I've been counting on, I've been, been sort of trying to force myself just to do it without the click. And so I listened to the no click versions of it and, and trying to play. I haven't got to the point that I'm brave enough to like record something and, and put it out yet. But I have seen there's some other drummers doing their versions of it and there's some, some guys playing some beautiful stuff there. Um, but yeah, so, and, and there's no, there's no obvious what to play. It's so, so open. So I, I, you know, I just think it's it's a series of, I mean, again, and it's a massive series of stuff. So I would encourage people to maybe check out Asaf's channel, listen to some of these. And if you find it interesting, you can go on Bandcamp and you, you can listen to the tracks and try and play along to them before you buy. You can try before you buy, basically, on Bandcamp. And then download some of these things um, and, uh, yeah, just see about playing because it, it'll bend your mind a little bit and, and makes you sort of have to, uh, oh, I'm going to say this, think outside the box. And, uh, yeah, I mean, these. I mean, it's not. It's not that I'm constantly trying, consciously, sorry, trying to challenge people to do different things or play like my myself. It's uh, basically, basically me. Just I, 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 you know, I. The the reason I do it so long. I didn't. I've done it now for three years, and I'm. I think I'm going to go on it for what it looks like forever, or at at least uh, for another. 40 or 60 videos or who knows what but i i just really enjoy doing that i really enjoy doing that and i i also find that um uh, it's a little bit for me like um uh, having a drum lesson so uh, you know uh, you know i've studied say in my in in later years uh, recently in the last say six or seven years i studied with bruce becker before that, I, I studied with Parmasami Kirupakaram, who is a great Mirdangam player, that all the Indian st stuff. And I always like to study uh, uh, more and different things. And I found b just by doing that, that it's almost like uh, a, a drum practice or a drum lesson for me. So I, 
I go to my studio and I record, say, five videos or six videos at a time. And I spend all that time thinking about the music, preparing, learning by heart. I mean, less so in this case because it's my own music. I, I wrote this stuff, so I know it. But um, the whole preparation thing and the, the, the actual performance, physical performance element of it really makes me uh, feel more in shape and uh, in, in a better place so I can go and play with other people like Soft Machine or, or, or do other uh, gigs that I uh, enjoy doing and want to be in shape for. I find that uh, this uh, series for me personally almost uh, is like taking a lesson basically mm -hmm. because uh, you know uh, and, and again we spoke earlier about the compartments of drum practice you know all the little the different sections of things that you need to practice uh, if you don't practice all of them in one session you're not a good drummer blah 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 all that kind of thing which a lot of people say to themselves yeah uh, including myself but i found that with playing that music uh, for me it's got all of it there it's got the time the click the the technique the uh, the solo uh, aspect of it the comping as uh, aspect of it thinking about the music learning the tune by heart uh the physicality of playing it uh you know li as you said leaving the space and trying to function within within a, a challenging space sometimes mm where the meters are changing, you know, one, one bar could be a 4-4, four, four, and then the next bar could be a 5-4, or could be a 7-4, and 9-4, and so on. So uh, it, it, it's, it's the challenge, really, and, and coming back to that thing of being engaged and focused in what you're doing. In this case, it's just because I really enjoy doing it, so I'm, yeah, I'm very engaged in, in what I'm doing uh and so it's almost like a, 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 a my sort of practice you know i do of course i do I've, I've got my own calisthenics and stuff that i practice on the drums and I get, you know getting in shape for for a gig or whatever but um but this for me is the one exercise that is for me got got everything there yeah, and it, it creates a performance, uh, a sense of like being in the moment of a performance as well. Absolutely. So yeah. you really go, I really try to give it all I've got every video. So, uh, you know, it yeah, really it does. Shows. Yeah, yeah, I love I love those videos. Thank and you. Yeah, so I'll, I'll link to all of that. Um, so I think we, we've been going for about an hour. So I think that's probably a reasonable amount of time. I, I was going to ask you if anybody's interested, are you offering sort of one-on-one -on -one uh, tuition at the moment or are you very busy just with soft machine i'm quite busy but uh, i i do offer one-to-one -one lessons online or in person uh, depending of where you are or where i am um, i do have a, a, a heavy t touring schedule so to have something on a weekly basis would be a bit of a challenge for me but uh, something on a monthly basis or, or, or just a few lessons I can definitely do. And I do, um, I do uh, give one-to-one uh, -one lessons, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. So again, I'll put all the contact details to your stuff uh, you. in the description box of this video. Okay, I think, think that's kind of cool. Let's, let's wrap that up. Thank you so much for doing this, Asaf. I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, check out Asaf's vast uh body of work basically and, and go and see soft machine if you can if you're in if you're in the same neighborhood as they are at some time i think that's probably a good thing to do